thank you, Lord, for your patience and your mercy. Lord, we just ask that you bless us on this evening, Lord, that your word ring out. And Father, we just thank you for all that you've done. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, and everyone says, Truly, we thank the Lord for all that he has done for us, and we definitely serve a good God, and he's able to do all things for us, and all we have to do is keep our mind in perfect peace with him. The mind of Christ is what we're looking for in order for us to be like him and do what he asks us to do. We have to have the mind of Christ. Now, I'm going to go a different way. Uh, that you may not be used to, but I want to go right quick, and I won't be before you long, to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians, the fifth chapter, and the 22nd verse. Galatians, the fifth chapter, and the 22nd verse says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. We as Christians uh, believe in Jesus, we are to be as he is. Christians will deal with so many different situations and so many different problems. Some deal with sicknesses and fears. Some deal with all kinds of things and defects in life, you know, have a tendency to throw us back. But most Christians fall prey to the enemy because their mind is not right. In Galatians, I said, Galatians, the fifth chapter and the 22nd verse says that, uh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such, there is no law. What I'm talking about is the mind of Christ, and the mind of Christ is in the fruit of the Spirit. We as believers, I found that in Isaiah, Isaiah the, the 26th chapter and the uh, third verse, it says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. And that's the word of the Lord. It says a lot of things about having the mind of Christ. And a lot of people don't uh, really feel that the fruit of the Spirit is part of the mind of Christ. But I'm here to tell you that it is. And if you bear with me, you will find out it to be true. Because when you go back to Galatians and go to the, the 19th verse, it talks about Flesh. And this is the mind of the flesh here. And it says here, now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. Idolatry, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness. Uh, uh, well, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variances, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders drunkenness and reveling and such like. Now these things here will not inherit the kingdom of God. I have found out that some of us as Christians have the mind of the flesh. And the thing about this is that sometimes it penetrates through your lifestyle. Uh -huh. And I always try to tell Christians, you know, what you really need to do is look at yourself in a mirror. Or should I say, put yourself in someone else's place. How do they see you? See, now we know how we see ourselves. But how do they see you? I've seen Christians that lie, cheat. I've seen Christians that hate folks. I've had people that dislike me, and I have to figure out why. And it's sad to know. Some folks will come back and say, you know, they love me, and nothing, as if nothing has happened. Some folks that won't talk to me for stuff I have no idea on. And this is the way we live in, in life. Some folks that call themselves born again in the spirit live their life 
like the flesh. Yep, yep, you know, yep. we have crafts and, uh, and heresies and, and strife. Now, the thing about the things of the flesh, it talks about strife. Uh -huh. Now, strife is conflict or, 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 or fighting. Now, see, being in the flesh, we have these kind of things. And a lot of uh, Christians, not in this church, but a lot of places that I've been to, have problems in standing in Christ. In other words, what I'm saying is that they'd rather be like they are with no change than to actually be in Christ. Now, I call some of these people uh, nice, nasty. You know, they're, they're nice, but they're just nasty. Well, at least they call themselves nice, but they're not nice at all. They're just nasty. And, uh, and, and we have Christians that are like that, and they don't have a problem in talking bad about you or talking uh, uh, corrupt about you. But when they get in front of your face, they smile in your face as if nothing has ever happened. And this here is what I call sorcery or witchcraft, which is also a part of the flesh. And see, these things should not be known among such. And the bottom line is this, that it's hard to receive anything from the Lord when you're operating in the flesh. When I say the mind of the flesh, I say we can look back and think about some of the things that we do or we have done. Some of us have lied, some of us have stolen, some of us have cheated, some of us have talked about somebody, some of us have done various things that are not of the Lord. And it disappoints the Lord. But sometimes we become reprobate in the things in which we do. And the workers uh, will end up being workers of iniquity. And see, as the word is saying, you know, the, the, the men, just like us, you know, when it's time for us to meet the Lord, we'll say, have we done this in your name? Have we done that in your name? And the Lord says, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I know you not. Now, the word iniquity means unjust. Are, are unjust. It also means unjust act or deed or wrong. And we as believers cannot be known as that. We have to be free. See, now, when we receive the Spirit of the Lord, the, when we gave our life to the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord came on us. And we become just like Him in the fruit of the Spirit is supposed to manifest itself in us. Now, in order to keep our minds in Christ, we must put on the mind, we must put on the mind of Christ, or we must uh, put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God is what we look for. Now, the word I found is activated by the Spirit, and the Spirit is activated by the word. And so there are some things I'm going to give you before I leave this podium here. Now, the Spirit is like a tree, and the tree itself, it grows fruit. And as we grow it in God, we become more like Him, because it is the mind of Christ that we're looking for. There's no other way we're going to have power except we have the mind of Christ. But that's not all we need to have. We have to have communication with the Lord, or should I say prayer, or pray to God, or have a relationship with the Lord. In uh, 1 uh, Thessalonians 5 and 17, it says, pray without ceasing. In other words, we are to continually build our relationship like Christ, because we want to be just like him. Because when we're just like him, that's when the power starts to flow. James, the fifth chapter in the 16th verse said, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. In other words, if your communication or if your, uh, 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 if your prayer life is right before the Lord, things change. Things change in your own personal surroundings. And then things will start to change outside. See, God works on us first, and then he works on other people through you. Now, the word of God is another thing that we should know. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Also, I found out that the word is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the body of 
discerner of soul and spirit and joint and moral, and is a discerner of the intents of the heart. And see, we can have power like that, but we have to keep our mind in Christ. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one other thing I want to say is that we have to know him, the name of the Lord. Yeah. Now, in Philippians, the fifth chapter, or Philippians, the second chapter, the ninth verse, it says, it says here, wherefore God also have, have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Yeah, yeah, also yeah. in Philippians, the uh, second chapter in the 10th verse, it says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And I see this is what God has given us, but we have to have everything in correct order. We have to have the mind of Christ. Now, in Matthew 28 chapter and the 19th verse, Jesus said that all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. Then he said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Ghost. And this is what Jesus said. Now, Jesus, this is, this is what Paul had written about Jesus. Now, in Acts, the first chapter, and the eighth verse, this is Luke talking about Jesus and what Jesus has said, because after Jesus left this place, he gave us power. And he said this, and this is Luke, he said, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto him. Now, why? Did he do this? Well, because the spirit is activated by the word, the word is activated by the spirit, and we have the mind of Christ, and if we have the mind of Christ, then we have power. Because see, having the mind of Christ means that you have access to the kingdom, because the Father has the same mind, the Holy Spirit has the same mind, and Jesus has the same mind, which gives you access to the kingdom. Oh, God has power. He's given power to everyone. He's yeah, given yeah. power to everyone who wants it. Uh -huh. You think about how Samson was uh, uh, had to face the Philistine. All he had to do is shake himself. And the Spirit of God came upon him and he killed a thousand Philistines for the glory of God. I like the way Jeremiah said, he said, it's like fire shut up in my own. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. the Spirit of the Lord. David slew a Goliath, the giant. No one else but one thing that he had that no one else had at that time was he was a man after God's own heart. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. sometimes we got to stand up, people. We got to stand and say, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. No devil in hell can stop me. Yeah. I'm not afraid because fear is torment and it's part of the flesh and we got to let that thing go. So if we stand on God and believe in his word and stand Yeah. 
sometimes when you come out of it, there's still problems. It seems like you have to start all over. I become a slave to other situations and circumstances. But you don't give up on the Lord right then. That's when you buckle down and you stay in the Lord. You know, when God opens the door and when God promises you some things, we ought to always believe what he says. Because, see, what the Lord says, it will come to pass. I remember a little girl that, that uh, was uh, with me at one time, and, and she did some nice little job for me, and I was so happy that she had done it, done it well, and she did it. But I asked, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, when I get finished with what I'm doing, I'm going to buy you some ice cream, and I'm going to buy you some cake. And we're going to have a good time. And the little girl was so happy. And she just said, happy, said, you really want to do that? I said, yes, I'm going to do that. That's exactly what I'm going to do. All I want you to do is just wait for a minute and let me take care of a couple of things. She was so joyous. She went out the door, just enjoyed, enjoyed, uh, enjoyed herself, almost worshiping that little girl. was going on out the door. Two minutes later, she came back and she said, are you going to, uh, you going to, going to get that ice cream and cake for me? I said, yes, I'm going to get that ice cream and cake. Just wait for a little bit. I will get that for you as soon as I finish what I'm doing. She said, okay, and she walked on out the door. Later on, she came on back and she looked at me and she said, you're not going to do what you said you were going to do. And it grieved my spirit. And I got to thinking, well, how does the Lord feel when we have doubt that he can bring us out of our situations? See, sometimes just because it's a trial doesn't mean that it doesn't, that it's going to hold you back for your destiny. Everybody has a destiny in the Lord. You have a destiny. She has a destiny. You have a destiny. I have one. We just got to get to it. But we go from trial to trial. And as we go through those things, this is where God starts opening up the doors and opening up our hearts and opening up our minds. See, we learn how to trust Him through some situations. See, we ought to make the best out of a bad situation because if we do that, that's when the Lord starts to make the change. See, we trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not into our own understanding. Because see, we always have a tendency to go and fall back on the way we think, the way we act, the way we do. And the Lord is saying, I just want you to erase everything that you've ever thought that I could not do and just start believing me. Sometimes you have to call on Judah. Judah means praise. And if you look at these guys here that I talked about, every last one of them that I looked at, they did one other thing, and they had contacted their Lord. Paul and Silas, when they were in situations, the first thing they did after being misused and abused, they went and they got thrown in the dungeon, and the first thing that they called on was their God. Yeah. The second one, I would say, is even, even a, a, a Joseph in a pit, and finally getting to a certain place, he finally gave his heart and talked to the Lord. <laughs> the reason why I use Samson, even though Samson might have made some mistakes, but at least one thing he did do, he did contact the Lord after his mistake, and he got right back into his destiny and fulfill what God wanted him to do. I look at David, how he slew the lion, and situation after situation, and, and Daniel in the lion's did he prayed, and David prayed, and the Hebrew boys prayed, and Moses prayed, and, and all these men got close to God, and, and this is what we are to do. Because, see, he is able to set us free out of our circumstances. Yes, yes. See, Jesus has power. He has power over your Red Sea situation. Uh, 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 he has power over your fiery furnaces. He has power over your lion's den, whatever it is, sickness and disease. He has power over the pit that you're in. He has power over the Roman jail. Oh, y'all don't hear me? He has power over all these things. See, all we have to do is let go and let go. Because, see, he's able to take care of it. No matter what the circumstances is, the situation is, he can take care of it. All we have to do is surrender. Now, some of us feel that, well, maybe we don't have enough faith. And, you know, and it's not working because we don't have enough faith. And, 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 and uh, I trusted God, and now it didn't work. But the first step of faith 
It's not by feeling. It's not by what you do all the time, but it is by what you say. If you speak the word, it's faith in itself. See, we have to allow God to move in his word. The only thing you need is his word and his spirit. What I used to do all the time, I do it all the time now. I say, Lord, when I'm in a dire strait or situation, bring your word back to me. No, I don't feel like I'm going to make it. No, something about this flesh is, is, is a liar. This flesh will tell you anything. You know, I don't feel like God's going to do it. And in my flesh and mind, I don't think God is going to do it. But the word says he's going to do it. And since the word says that I'm going to speak it as an act of faith. And as I start speaking that thing, and all of a sudden things start to change. And one other thing I want to say, you know, when God blesses you, don't just go and praise the Lord and walk away. Write it down. I like to write it down. I always tell people to write it down because when you go back into dire straits, because you will end up in another warfare, you have something to look out besides the word of the Lord. You have your own testimony. When situations happen, you can read, okay, on February 19, 1980, the Lord did such and such and such. And then in the same year, the Lord did such and such and such a woman. By the time you get up to uh, 2010, the Lord gave me such and such and such. A, and the Lord did this and the Lord did that. And this is my testimony. By the time you get through, you have so much faith built up. You know that you know that you know. And he's able to deliver you from all of the fiery thoughts of the enemy. See, we can trust in the Lord. But we trust in his word and we trust in the spirit. Because God is able to open up every door. He is able to fix your problem. He is able to, to, to take care of your circumstances. So we don't have to worry about anything. All we have to do is just be obedient. See, this is not a hard thing. See, we the devil makes it hard. We think that we got to do all kinds of rituals and things and incantations or whatever you do. You know, we don't have to do all that stuff. All we have to do is read the word and pray and, and ask the Lord to help me to, to, to let the word come up when I need it the most and, and when I don't need it and, and, and just give me more joy within the word and, and ask the Lord starts building up in you. Once you ask that question, once you ask the Lord that, what happens is God starts building up in you a new creature, a new creation, a new person, a new spirit, a new mind, a new way of living. You start to change in the way you used to do, you don't do no more. The things you used to, places you used to go, you don't go nowhere no more. Uh, the things you used to say, you don't say no more. Why? Because the spirit has overtaken you and it's changed your way of living. It's changed your way of being. It's changed the way you act. It changed the way you walk. It changed the way you talk. You got a new life in him. And if you believe him, he'll overcome, he'll overcome your situations. In God, there's life. And there may be somebody tonight that still needs a savior. I don't know about you, but every day I need my Savior. And I'm so pleased that he's with me. But if you are missing out on sin, now is the time. Deacons, won't you come? Doors of the church.